I feel so inadequate. We're back with, don't feel inadequate, John. <laughs> well, he's a very well-known composer. You two sing, and John, you grow great again. zucchini. <laughs> Oh, we're yeah, back with Charles Strauss and Delarue. You can Delarue. spot bears for us. <laughs> yeah, I know a bear when I see it. You bet. <laughs> we couldn't do that. <laughs> we left off at Golden Boy, and you were saying that Della was almost in the show. Yes, yes. I was. I was almost yeah. in the show. I didn't realize that you remembered that. Oh, it was, yeah. It was very important to oh, me. Oh, yes. I cried a lot about that. How come you weren't? I never knew. I know why. I, I mean, never because knew. the part of the sister, which she would have been ideal for, uh, became smaller and smaller, and guess whose part became larger and larger? Sammy Davis. Right. Okay. I mean, it was as it should be. That's yes. not to say anything against Sammy. Well, but I, mean, I didn't that... think it was as it should be. I wanted that part so bad that oh. time yeah. I could taste it. Yeah. I mean, what? a lot of people don't know what a fine actress you are. I happen Thank to have heard you. that reading. Thank I mean, you're you. well known as a singer Thank and now you. as a cook, but uh, you're a very lady. fine actress. Yeah. Nice. In media and everything. What about the other song from, uh, from Golden Boy? Well, uh, a night song. I won't do the whole thing. Game became a little known. Uh, summer, not a bit of breeze. Neon signs are shining through the tired trees. I won't do that all because it's a long song. And it's lovely Ready. too. Thank you. Yeah. I've, I've always uh, liked that score. It was more. It was, came out more as an instrumental. No, nobody yes. sang it much. No, it was never done much because the range, the range of it is yeah. phenomenal. Yeah. It's about an octave and. Uh, it's t almost two octaves. Who sang that in the show? Did Sammy sing that? <laughs> Who else? <laughs> Sammy sang that. Yeah, he has that kind of a range, huh? Oh, yes. Oh, Sammy, Sammy has Sammy. a terrific Phenomenal. voice. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Good voice. But mm -hmm. oh, what's the other one that you were, we were diddling around in the Well, in the this is the yeah. life. This is where the living is. This is the life. Baby, you're there. Which, which uh, Billy Daniels sang. Yeah. With Guess Who. It was guess who. <laughs> <laughs> now you were saying the one that you sing in your nightclub act. I want to be with you. I used to sing in Vegas at, late at night. You know, when yes. uh, in Vegas things stay open to five o'clock. Sometime my last show was around. I'd go on at four. All right, is this and, putting you? I know this and, is putting uh, you totally on the spot. Oh yes, would it is putting a, me totally on the spot. Would you do it? I don't know if I remember it, and I wouldn't want to do what you did. You know, <laughs> you in the middle of it. You know, he might I write me like another it. song somewhere else. If you give me some of it and you tell me what it says. <laughs> I don't know what what key you probably. Well, we just kill that whole bit. No, come on, let's try. Everybody wants to the I want to be with you. I want to be with you. After all those years of wanting you. Wanting you. Too low for you. I need you. Uh, I love you. <laughs> and be with you. It's a marvelous song, and and it's a it's a good love song too, you know. Especially for if you got somebody you're sitting up with at four o'clock in the morning, you know that explains it all, just exactly what you have in mind. Do you sing to those you sit up with? Oh at yes, oh, I bet they love people it. who stay till four o'clock in the morning to see you love each other, yeah. and they love you very much collectively usually, and so you really pour it out. But I pour it out for everybody, but you know, I really, really? yeah. I can't remember yeah. the last time I was up four o'clock in the morning. Well, you ought I'll to try to still nice out at 4 o'clock in the morning. Really? It is, Once yeah. in a while, it's Some fun. audience. <laughs> it's, it's funny about that. It, it seems so inconsequential now, but at that time, I mean, we wrote Golden Boy, and it was about two human beings in love, but uh, it was about uh, a, a man who happened to be black and a woman who happened to be white, and uh, that song was sung between a, uh, a black man and a, and a white woman. It's the first time it had ever been done on Broadway. Gee. And uh, I just heard you talking before about your gums. Yes. And... Uh, it, we got hate mail. We uh, we had to have bodyguards. It was interesting how the climate now has totally changed. What was the year, Charles? 1964, I believe. Hmm. Yeah. yeah. Are you related to Johan? Uh, I, I think through a marriage somewhere, but not uh, a blood. Uh, not uh, that relation. Strauss family. No, we we spell it differently too. We s how how like do you to differ? Uh, my name is spelled the correct way, S-T-R-O-U-S-E. Oh, 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 I see. They're the dummies, huh? Yeah, yeah. They do it wrong over there. From Golden Boy. Well, after Golden Boy, uh, uh, I did a, well, I did a couple of shows in London, and then I uh, did a, a show called Applause here uh, with Lauren Bacall, yeah. and that was a, a great success, and uh, I just saw her last night at the opening of a show, and she... It's an incredible thing. She looks even more beautiful and young every time I see her, and uh, I don't know how she does it. And she was a uh, she made a remarkable uh, uh, debut as a musical star, uh, considering the fact she had never sung before. Oh, on she Broadway. really? Because I sung. saw that show, and she was just. She great. was wonderful. No, she used to. As a matter of fact, she told me that when she went to uh, parties uh, in Hollywood, that if it was dark enough and there was a lot of noise and people were smoking and nobody was paying attention, it was important. She would. St 
go to the piano, and she usually went with a friend of hers, a fairly well-known uh, uh, composer at the time, and she would do something like... Uh, uh, Embrace me, my sweet embrace me. Like George Burns. Didn't and she, she sing in the big sleep, though? Didn't she sing? No, something? it was somebody else's voice. Oh, it uh, was? So she, when, when, when I worked with her for the first time, she thought that was the way she sang, that the whole orchestra would follow her. Because this guy used to go... And she didn't realize he used to go... Yes. Embrace me sometimes, too. And, you know, with an introduction and yeah. all that. Completely thrown. She said, well, "Why can't they follow me?" And I said, "Well, they can at times, but you know, 26 men. Uh, she couldn't quite understand." Well, then that. she, after doing that at the piano, when she got up on stage and applause, what was what was the best number that she did? I'm sure they were all great. Oh well, they were all good. She, but alive was a, was a big number for her. The, the, uh, she is such a remarkable woman. I could talk about her for a long time, because uh, she did one of the uh, rarest things that a star can do, and that is the very biggest number in the show was the title song, Applause, Applause. Yeah. and anybody else, you would know this from your experience in the theater and on, this, uh, on the stage, anybody else would say, that's my song. Yeah. She didn't. It was given to a little girl, yes. Bonnie Franklin, by the way, who is uh, now... <laughs> yeah. Doing one, one step, one day <laughs> uh, at a time? Uh, yes. Right, and, uh, and she let Bonnie sing it, and she was off stage through the whole thing. It's, it's would you a very play a little generous... Bit? Oh, sure. <laughs> <laughs> what? It, wait, let me see. <laughs> I've got a dream. <laughs> What is it that we're living for? Applause, applause. Nothing I know brings on the glow like sweet applause. You're thinking you're through, that nobody cares. And suddenly you hear it, you're starting. And somehow you're in charge again and life's a ball trumpets all sing life seems to swing and you're the king of it all cause you've had a taste of the sound that says love applause 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 well, applause do more of this though don't go We're having a serious discussion here with Charles Strauss and uh, Della Reese and John and I. And uh, remember that song? You know the song, the theme song from uh, All in the Family. Yeah. You two sing it. Boy, the songs that Glenn Miller played. Come on, Della. Songs that the hip hop rain. It was like We had it. Songs that the hip hop rain. Had it. <laughs> Down the day. I wish I could get that part too. I wanted that part, but O'Connor wouldn't hear it. That's your song, isn't it? 
Yes. He didn't do bad with that one. No. No. no was, she planned it every week. Reruns and yeah. reruns. How and did that happen? Did Norman Lear commission you to do I, uh, it? I had written a, uh, a score for a, a motion picture of Norman's called The Night They Raided Minsky's. Yes. Uh, and uh, we became friendly. And uh, uh, then he had the idea to do this show. He had no money uh, at, the, at the time to develop it. And uh, he said, um, here's $200. That was the, the, the price. I said, well, that's not my usual price. I mean, I, I, th that wasn't the point of the whole thing. But he said, he said out of that, he said, I, I'd like to be for chorus and orchestra. With, I said, Norman, I said, yeah, I mean, that, you know, it doesn't pay for copying. No. So it was my suggestion. It's funny how things happen that because when I was a kid and we were, you know, lower class people, I suppose you'd say, we all used to sit around the piano. And I said, why don't you do that? I said, because you can't afford anything else anyway. Why don't you have Carol sit at the piano? And uh, with with Edith, and uh, that's what happened, and, and it became the logo of the show. It's interesting and it's wonderful, but it was really because of the fact that they, there was no money. And Charles, wasn't the fact that we were mentioning before there was a certain word at the end of there that it was sort of garbled or swallowed by I don't know Edith or Archie, and the mail is pouring in, and it became yeah. one of the top yeah. trivia questions. Top What's trivia. that word? Well, the people in Boston can be the first to know. It's G. G E E our old La Salle. La Salle was a car which was yeah. called a that was a, the poor man's Cadillac. Ran Gee. great. What about Annie Charles? Aren't you thrilled to I am thrilled that because I, I never would know anything yeah. about those things yeah. unless I, I saw them on television or you <laughs> told me. You know what I mean. <laughs> okay. Well, How about uh, Annie? The story. Of Annie. Uh, Annie. The story of uh, Annie was a uh, surprise to everybody, and uh, we thought we would be uh, very fortunate if we got a. Uh, uh, a special, a Christmas special on ABC or NBC out of it. And uh, we had secret uh, thoughts for doing it on the stage, but we didn't think it would have the kind of future that it did. Mm. Uh, it was done at the Goodspeed Opera first in Connecticut, and uh, it had a moderate success, but uh, its success was underlined and enhanced a great deal by the fact that the three of us who wrote it, Tom, me, and Martin, Charney, and I, uh, were good friends, and we worked very, very hard on it with a great deal of joy and uh, then Mike Nichols picked it up there and it went on to Broadway opened in Washington. I've never heard any song as much as tomorrow everywhere you go I mean it comes out of the little perfume thing in the in the bathroom on the highway <laughs> tomorrow <laughs> tomorrow is everywhere the, well the show's what, opening wait, here right what, what, what is the perfume thing on the highway you know when you go in the ladies room and why aren't room, I collecting a, royalty you get a, a perfume and it says tomorrow oh, I tomorrow I thought there was a new machine <laughs> that, was, <laughs> that dispensed perfume as you went under the tunnel or something <laughs> no, uh, oh gosh Charles the show opens here November 27th why don't you play a little of tomorrow all right. oh tomorrow yeah. tomorrow <laughs> Just a little of it. Oh, yeah, whatever. The sun will come out tomorrow. Bet your bottom dollar that tomorrow there'll be sun. Just thinking about tomorrow clears away the cobwebs and the sorrow. Till there's none when I'm stuck with a day. That's gray and lonely I just stick out my chin And grin And say Oh The sun will come out Tomorrow So you got to hang on Till tomorrow Come what may Isn't that funny? Why? To, well, I mean, because it's a, a I don't know, I, these are, I hate show business stories, but that was a song that was written not to be a song. Uh, it goes, Annie, 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 
look what you've done for us, Annie. Annie, Annie, brought out the fun for us. Oh, I won't do the whole. I wrote it as a counterpoint to another song which was thrown out of the show. Isn't that something? And everyone liked the counterpoint, so we kept that in. Gee, our well, time is up. Thank you. It is. <laughs> and the crew is going why, crazy on top of why that. Why is our time always up on that story? <laughs> hey, uh, I want to thank Della for. I, I didn't get a chance to mention you gave me this creative cookbook. Oh, yeah, nice. I want you to get in the kitchen and do good things with Carol Soup. Carol sure will love that. Carol's yeah. a creative cook, oh, right, Chuck? Carol will love it if you get in the kitchen and cook some. <laughs> Carol told me to tell you she's tired of all that cooking. <laughs> Wrong. I've cooked before. <laughs> She likes it better when she cooks. Huh? Della, thank you very much. I'm glad much. I came. It was I'm a very nice morning. I'm glad you stayed morning. so long with us. And Charles, really.